uh gosh 11 to 1130 it was a remarkable broadcasting day and it was just one mega positive thing after another so here we go the words i wanted to hear with the 12th pick in the 2024 nfl draft the denver broncos select Bo Nix. There it is. Wow. Quarterback, Oregon. Six for 12. He was the sixth quarterback taken. This is a historic draft. Six quarterbacks taken in the first 12 picks. But it's not that he's the sixth best quarterback. He was the sixth quarterback taken. In 2018, was Lamar Jackson the fifth best quarterback or was he the fifth quarterback taken? And now we shall see. But, man, I tell you, one of the greatest things about the draft is seeing the reaction of the athletes in their Hello? Hey. Yes, sir, I appreciate it. Absolutely. You want to win a Super Bowl? All right, let's go. Coach Payton, what's up? You, you ready to roll? is just awesome so he didn't go to uh detroit they blame him um he's surrounded by his family and friends a dad who was a player and a coach family who loves him his wife is 24 years old and afterwards he had this message denver i am so excited to be a bronco this is such a dream come true from day one, Denver was my number one. I want to say thank you to the organization. I can't wait to meet the fans. Broncos country, let's go. Today at 2 p.m., Bo Nix will address the media um, locally here for the first time. And we'll cover it live on Altitude Sports Radio 92.5. Cannot wait for that. Can't wait. Just truly, truly awesome. Meanwhile, during the draft itself, Sean Payton jumped on. This is such a seeing Bill Belichick as a member of the media is weird and a little awkward. He's not exactly who I think of with the cool crowd with Pat McAfee, but I don't know. So he's on there with Pat McAfee and they're talking to Sean Payton and uh, I mean, invest in a tripod coach. First-hand experience here. But that being said, Sean Payton, this was during the actual draft um, on both. And and then we were there for the pro day, and then our private workout was the following day. We threw 80 more balls. And I can't think of a pass where – and so the first sign of an inaccurate quarterback is when you're throwing these shorter – these shorter routes because the ball's got to be on the right shoulder. It's got to be on the – you know, for the back – it's a little bit easier down the field to to stretch the ball and maybe uh, hide your accuracy deficiencies. And so, man, it, it's it was impressive. And uh, I just remember we got in the car afterwards, and I just looked around and I said, "Are you kidding me?" I mean, he. The other thing was I was surprised how big he. He's six two, two hundred eighteen pounds. They, you know, and it's it's hard sometimes when you play on the West Coast. Your games are on at nine p.m. But. Um, yeah, I, I think I think the biggest thing is trust in what you're seeing, and and I say that respectfully. Everyone has jobs to do, and 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 it's always like, well, manage the draft. This is you know you could have backed up and got him, and it, and I heard that with Patrick Mahomes when when Kansas City took him, and I'm like, well, they couldn't have backed up and got him because we were taking him with the next pick, right? 
which I have literally been saying for months, years even. Oh, he's good at 12. He's not good at 12, but at 22. No, he's the quarterback. It's different when it's the quarterback. Listen, whether you believe him or not, um, doing a little snooping behind the scenes, it it was Knicks for these guys. I mean, it, you know, Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jane Daniels, they didn't matter. They weren't going to be able to move up. Nothing happened. New England, Washington, and Chicago weren't moving for anything. Minnesota was nervous enough about the Broncos to move up a little bit for J.J. McCarthy. So, I mean, if I find out later the number one guy for the Broncos really was J.J. McCarthy, I'll be a little disappointed, a little bit. But, I mean, a little. You did the right thing. And for all of those who are upset with the move, you, just, you, you have not been paying attention to what's been going on with the Broncos. You haven't been paying attention enough. You're, you're lacking in your... Um, and there's some people who are, have been around here for a long time that don't like this move. And... Um, Oh, how could you pass on Brock Bowers and um, Dallas Turner? Easily wasn't even close. George Payton. Um, never really got too serious. You know, we did, we considered moving back, you know, but once Penix went, it got a little, you know, uh, stressful there at the end. You had the Raiders behind us. Um and so, you know, we just didn't want to overthink it. You know, this was our guy. We we're going to take our guy. Um, but we, we did think about it. Not too far. You know, there was, a, there was a few, you know, we could have moved a couple picks back and maybe got some picks. But at the end of the day, this, this was our guy. Let's just take him. Let's not overthink it. And um, we would have been sick, you know, if we lost him just for, a, you know, a couple fifth-round picks or what have you. I was actively involved in trying to pretend we were moving forward. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> it's this time of the year, and it's difficult, and, and, you know, we want to keep our options open. And yeah, Sean the jokester. We, George Payton, would consider moving back. Not Sean Payton, but maybe this is the right balance between these two. Maybe it is. <laughs> You're going to move that. George is right. What are we moving back for? A couple of fifth round picks? Fuck. What are we doing? Do we like this guy or not? That's it. Yeah, I I think what the Falcons did was smart and stupid at the same time. It's smart because they love Michael Penix. So why mess around? You're at eight. There he is. Who cares where you think he's going to go? He's your quarterback. Now. What the Falcons did, though, they're paying Kirk Cousins to be their quarterback, and you, you had a first-round pick, and you didn't help your free agent quarterback. There are players flying off the board in the first round who are going to be immediate starters, and you're picking eight, and you pick a backup quarterback? Way to scream, we don't trust you, Kirk Cousins. That, to me, is stupid beyond belief, but, I mean, whatever. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Because it, it, it forced the Broncos to do the right thing. And they got a bit lucky, okay? But they didn't mess around. 